Uh, they've been supporting us also all year long, and they do all, so all the tweets and everything you see is all through Brian's digital marketing team. Um, please note, though, we would love for you to join all our different handles. So RI underscore startups is our handle, so please join that. So now I'm going to introduce to you one of our co-chairs, a uh, very dynamic individual. So this is Anthony Mangiarelli, and he is the partner at KLR, and as I said, one of our co-chairs. So thank you for coming. Thank you, Beth. Yes. Uh, so, Anthony Majorelli, only kid in kindergarten, you could not spell his last name. <laughs> um, so, as Beth said, this is our 20th year, and, and this is probably my 12th year uh, being involved with competition, my ninth year being a uh, chair. And uh, so, before proceeding, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the progress of the renowned business competition. So launched in 2000 by the business development company. We had one sponsor that year, business development. And since that time, more than 200 teams have been named semifinals. And those of us who are all night. Additionally, many hundred more have applied to the competition. And the competition itself is really a community effort involving many people who help us fundraise, you can see our free workshops, <laughs> service judges. <laughs> <laughs> and provide back up the source. And since our inception, it's it's been amazing to me um, how our winners and finalists have flourished even during COVID and economic downturns. As an example, one of our 2020 winners, Flux Marine, who uh, manufactures the electronic no, electric outboard motors, um, they, they've been in the headlines a lot lately because their business is significantly expanding and thankfully staying in Rhode Island. Our applicants come from diverse backgrounds and have unique businesses. As a matter of fact, three of our past winners, Sessatech, Large Collective, and q Behave, are all women-owned businesses. Additionally, um, last year, Danny Warshay, who some of you may know, uh, he's, he's from the Nelson Center at Brown University. He wrote a book entitled, See, Solve, Scale. And in the book, he highlights various Brown business competition winners including Free Mama, Dear Kate, and Bruno. Uh, Free Mama uh, made prenatal vitamins in a, in a form that were easier for uh, expecting mothers to take. Uh, Dear Kate uh, in, created women's lip proof underwear. And Bruno was uh, an iced tea with a pretty creative, uh, unique background. But in Danny's book, he explains how the Renowned Business Competition is an excellent example of a catalyst that has been a disproportionate has had a disproportionate impact on the trajectory of these companies and many of the winners. As he says in the book, students learn from my class in our center. We tell you that if they had not won, say, the $25,000 in Brown Business Competition prizes, they may have very well never had the confidence and energy to pursue their ventures. And while talking about prizes, none of them would be possible if not for our sponsors, which include private companies service organizations, public agencies, colleges, universities, banks, private investors, but most importantly, former competitors. These organizations provide ongoing support, which enables the competition to function year to year, which in turn allows entrepreneurs to build a business framework to transform their idea into reality. We recognize that our sponsors are approached by other organizations, so it's imperative that everyone understands that cash rewards and prizes we offer provide support for these entrepreneurs to grow their businesses. The Round Business Competition is a catalyst that helps entrepreneurs grow their businesses, generating economic development, meaning jobs in the state of Round. And if you want to learn more about being a sponsor, please reach out to Beth. She's fabulous. She's amazing. She's waving at me from the back. <laughs> um, and speaking of fabulous, my, my fabulous coach here, Peggy Farrell, um, did not be here this evening. She's a partner at PBL. But she invited her amazing colleague, Megan Cooper, uh, to the event. And Megan has graciously offered to step in tonight for Peggy. So at this time, um, I'd like to ask Megan to join us at the podium to share a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, so this is my first year involved with the competition, 
And I have been very impressed with not only the variety of businesses competing, but also the passion and the drive that they have demonstrated. That is why I'm very excited to introduce our 2022 Rhode Island Business Competition winner, Alana Kostia, the founder of Q2P. She has produced a wearable device intended to deliver positive reinforcement for desired behavior in children with ADHD. Alana. Hello everyone. Uh, so I'm Anna Costa, I'm the founder of QTP Behave, and you can say the winner of last year's competition. Uh, first of all, thank you to the Live Business Competition team for the invitation to be here today. And big congrats to the uh, amazing group of finalists for this year's competition. As a brief introduction, and some of it was already mentioned, uh, QTP Behave is a digital health company that is uh, grounded in my extensive experience of treating children with severe mental disorders. A physician and child psychologist, and having a clear understanding of those needs. We are developing a solution as a treatment intervention for childhood ADHD. And specifically, the solution is using wearable and cloud technology to automate the implementation of behavior interventions, a commonly used treatment modality for ADHD. However, currently, this uh, treatment is delivered purely manually via the well known behavioral charts. Or sticker charts that probably most of us sitting on journeys sort of We have made tremendous progress in the last year, and I am very grateful to the Rhode Island Business Competition for the support uh, in um, various aspects of the business, from uh, legal to accounting to uh, media exposure. Furthermore, the financial support has allowed us to uh, proceed with our product development. And to that end, I am very excited to start at our clinical study for proof of concept and feasibility testing that we are conducting in collaboration with university. As a sidebar, we are uh, actively recruiting for this study uh, children that are six to eleven year old with and without ADHD. Uh, therefore, if you know someone that uh, might be willing to participate in the study, please let me know if you can give This uh, study is a key step in our uh, product development as it will allow to accelerate the development of our MVP and to access uh, private funding and therefore progress to specialization. To conclude, QTB Behave is uh, a company looking to empower children and their families to manage ADHD. Thank you. Thank you, Alana. Great things. Look forward to uh, seeing your success for many years to come. And Forward to seeing it happen here in Rhode Island. So uh, this year's finalists are outstanding leaders, and I want to take you through how we got to today, i.e. the judging process. So in, in addition to myself and, and fabulous Peggy Farrell, who I mentioned earlier, um, the judges this year, and let's not call them judges, let's call them the champions of Rhode Island entrepreneurship, <clears throat> um, Kim Anderson, who's an impact investor and owner of Plant City right across I don't know where I'm right there. Okay, <laughs> can probably get to me. Uh, Bob Chatham is a director at Slayer Technology Fund. Bob's here. Jason Costa is vice president of uh, commercial banking at Washington Trust. And I know I saw Jason earlier. This is Jason, sorry. <laughs> Kathleen Flynn is the executive director at URI's Business Engagement Center. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, Aiden Petrie is the managing partner at the Women Medical Innovation Center. Nemec, Aiden's here somewhere. He's outside. He's <laughs> over there. Kim's over there. Aiden's over there. Uh, and Annette Tonti was the managing director at Brock. And that's here as well. And um, would you all stand so we can recognize you for being champions of Brock? Okay. Very much. And, and additionally, if any of our advisory board members are here, could they stand? I didn't see any from tonight. Yeah. So we all look for Again, if you'd like to be involved in the competition, please find Beth. You know, go to Beth. That's our strategy. Just go to Beth. <laughs> um, we appreciate all your efforts in making what our business position what it is today. So we had a very tough job this year. So our job was to narrow down the uh, 35 participants who applied online. And so they completed an online application and that puts all applicants 
on the uh, even ground, same playing field, and ensures that all the answers, um, all the questions um, are answered, and we, we review them. And then we chose nine semifinalists. And, um, you know, a change to the competition has pivoted as the world has pivoted. Um, we did not require semifinals to prepare a full business plan. I mean, who writes a 40 page business plan these days anyway? Uh, instead, we asked them to prepare an investor deck, and they all did an amazing job. And then we had all the semifinals uh, meet with the judges. And in five minutes, they, they were asked one question. Explain to us how you will succeed. And after that, we reviewed all the semifinals and we narrowed it down to four finals. And then each finals came in for a grueling half hour where we drilled down on specifics and we really uh, hit them hard, poked holes in all their, their amazing businesses. And so the judges have selected the winners, but no one else knows who they are. Um, so you're gonna to have to wait a little bit because we're gonna get from all the finals and then you'll earn the point. So that's the process. And um, at this time, I'd like to welcome Megan back to the podium to uh, introduce all the finals for us so they can share a little bit about So it's my pleasure to be introducing the finalists this evening to present to us in alphabetical order. Each finalist will have a few minutes to present their businesses to all of you. So our first business tonight is New Ad Custom Controllers, which has created a single hand video game controller so that a gamer with one hand or another disability can reach all of the buttons. The principal applicant is Charles Johnson. Charles, you need to come up. Uh, good evening. My name is Charles Johnson. I am a founder of the Lodge Single Hand Video Game Controller. Uh, uh, I own the mic. Uh, the mic is needed for the online. Thank you, Bert. Yep. Sorry. Um, good afternoon. My name is Charles Johnson. I am the founder of the Lodge Single Hand Video Game Controllers. The problem with the standard video game controller is it was designed to be played with two hands. What if you don't have two hands? I saw this problem when I was playing video games with my cousin who was born with one arm. Unfortunately, he couldn't reach all the buttons to play effectively. And that's the problem that many gamers with disabilities have is reaching all the buttons. It's nearly impossible to do. So I asked him, why don't you actually buy a single hand video game controller that you could use? He says, I have it and they're terrible. The problem with the single hand video game controllers in the market is the accessible gaming controllers range from $500 to $1,500. The Sony PlayStation controller actually doesn't have all of the buttons, so you can't play most video games. The Xbox controller does have all the buttons, but it's extremely large. You can't reach all the buttons to play effectively. So this led to the creation of a lot of single hand video game controllers. Our controller is left hand, right hand, universal. It is wireless and is ergonomically designed to fit hand sizes from kids to adults. Ironically, this is when I found our second customer segment. I'm a teacher at a K-12 school, and I was actually allowing little kids to play with my controller. When one of the kids blurts out, yes, now I can eat Cheetos and play Mario Kart. <laughs> I realized we had our second customer segment. And then it began to dawn on me, how many other gamers would want a free hand to play video games, to talk on the phone, or to snack and not have a messy controller? And this is what makes our controller distinct and unique, and makes it extremely scalable. Not only do we appeal to the 400 million gamers with disabilities, we also appeal to the 3 billion gamers worldwide who'd like a free hand to multitask. Additionally, our controller is run by an independent PCB board, which means our controller is compatible with 100 million Xbox gamers, uh, it's compatible with 120 million monthly PlayStation gamers, and the 1 billion PC gamers worldwide. And last but not least, fun fact, Nawad Controllers is actually named after Nawada Ir Gitlim, who is a mystical 16th century Celtic warrior who lost an arm in battle. The lot single hand video game controllers single handedly changing the way video games are played. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Charles. That was great. So next we will hear from Poppy's Coquito, which is an authentic, high-quality Coquito-inspired liqueur, resonating both with heritage and appealing to the American taste. The principal applicant was Victor Regina. Victor, would you like to come up? That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> thank you so much for that. Um, first, I would like to say thank you so much to the finalists, the judges for um, allowing us to be here as well as the competition of three finalists. Um, before I introduce myself, I'd like to introduce the team. Uh, sitting down right over there, I have my CFO and my COO, CFO Luis Olmo, and my COO Travis Escobar. And my name is Victor Regino, I'm the CEO of. Um, but before we get on to the problem of why this business came about, I have to, I have to tell you the story because the story really is what, what sells this product and what, you know, tells you what this product is all about. Our journey began with, uh, Juana, who is my grandmother. Uh, she passed down her time on her coquito recipe, um, and, you know, she, I call myself Bobby, a lot of my friends call me Bobby, so. That's where the name Bobby Smokito came from. Uh, inspired by her legacy, we established Bobby Smokito for embracing tradition, authenticity, and unwavering commitment to quality in every bottle we produce. We take the Coquito from the family kitchen to a store near you. So a little bit behind that, we sold product before or we gave product to family and friends, and it was a homemade Coquito. It was right from the heart, and it still is to this day, right from the heart, right from the kitchen. Actually, my wife and I started this, blending it in our kitchen. And then I can't tell you how many countless days uh, I come back from work and I tell my wife, please, please make me like 50 bottles of Coquito. And then I'm on the road all night. So a big shout out to the K Um Now, I use Coquito honoring my grandmother in a very specific way by cherishing family recipes and by preserving the cultural essence of traditional Puerto Rican culture. Standing out in a market saturated with generic uh, cream liqueurs, Bobby Coquito is not generic. I'll tell you that right now. And as genuine as we are, we do offer consumers unparalleled experience that celebrates their heritage and brings them closer to their homes. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our, uh, our target market. Our target market is the Latino population. And in the United States, um, the United States has reached 62.1 million in 2020 of Latinos and millennials, con constituting a large segment of that. Uh, so there's a very big addressable market there. And as the demand for ready to drink uh, beverages surges, Bobby's Coquito is right there leading the path. And when you go through liquor stores, bars, restaurants that hold our product, uh, and just to just to mention, we also went from zero to 60 different locations in the state of Rhode Island. And a lot of people who's, who are not in the alcohol industry don't really understand that, but just to put it into perspective, there are uh, spirit beverages that are have been around for way longer and don't even have half as much. Um, so one of the good things that come around with Bobby Sofito and us being the distributor and the producer, we have a very unique distribution. Uh, we distribute our own product, but we also manufacture our own product. And you might be asking how that's possible. It's the license that we stand around, and it's very unique to us. So not only are we able to contract um, somebody to create our recipe and blend and bottle our product, but they ship it over to us as distributors and we sell directly to our consumers. So it's very huge. Um, and with this money, if we do uh, happen to win, I know we have some really great finalists over here. So, you know, understand that. We would expand Bobby Coquito to Massachusetts, to Connecticut, you know, like Southern Massachusetts. That's where we plan on heading. And we plan on heading nationally, honestly. Uh, there aren't that many, I can count my hand how many Coquito brands there are in the market today, and that's not a joke. Uh, in the state of Rhode Island, we only have two Coquitos, and the other Coquito is Bacardi, which we're outselling five to one in the past. It's huge. 
So by securing all this additional funding, it would, it would allow us to accelerate growth, uh, fund marketing initiatives, and forge strategic partnerships and increase production capacity to meet ever-growing demand. And who doesn't want that for a minority-owned business? Come on, let's be real, you know? So thank you so much for having me here, and I thank you all for giving me the chance to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. That was great. So next up is Trace Sensing Technologies, which has developed a sensor platform capable of detecting target biomarkers in exhaled breath or through skin for rapid, early, non-invasive disease diagnosis and monitoring. The principal applicant is Peter Ritchie. Peter? I'm holding this one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Peter Ritchie. I wanted to start by saying I was the only kid growing up who could spell my name correctly. Um, so I just wanted to start with a little bit of the backstory um, before I get into trace sensing. So um, in the diagnostic space today, everybody knows the problem that we're facing, right? Whether it's us or it's our family members, we go to the doctor with some lingering pain or something that you, know, you think is, is mild and you end up with a debilitating disease diagnosis. And everybody thinks that it's a curse, right? If something went wrong and it's my fault or you know, some spell was cast on me. But the problem has nothing to do with us. It's with the diagnostic space. So we have healthcare providers who are highly skilled and they've been training for decades to diagnose disease, but the tools they have are significantly underwhelming and it's stagnated. And so at Trace Sensing Technologies, we're trying to solve that problem by giving these healthcare providers a tool that can uh, rival their own knowledge. And so while working on my PhD at the University of Rhode Island, we were developing a sensor platform to sniff for explosives. So the idea was that we would actually put bomb sniffing dogs out of airports. So please, please don't get mad at me for that. Um, and while working on my PhD, we developed this sensor that was significantly better than a dog's nose. Um, it could detect explosives through luggage, through bags, anything you could imagine. And while completing that PhD, I found out about the presence of these chemicals in breath that all of us have. And they're not bad breath, as, as some of us may know. They are very small quantity chemicals that are related to the development of disease. So, for example, as a cancer is developing, these biomarkers become present and they are detected, but not by the tools we have today. And so I decided to take this digital dog nose, as we call it, and turn it into a disease diagnosis platform for the diagnosis of any number of diseases, you know, cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, diabetes, whatever you can imagine, diseases that don't even have a diagnostic standard right now. And so what we did with this was we decided to do a market analysis. Who would look, who would, you know, be interested in this? Doctors fell in love with it. They, they asked me to buy one outright, even though we hadn't, you know, got it with the FDA. Um, individuals who had been using uh, blood glucose monitoring devices for years wanted a non-invasive alternative. And so I knew immediately what my path was. I graduated my PhD and we started trace sensing technologies in order to commercialize this. So in a couple of months, I'm meeting with the FDA for the first time to you know, explain this idea to them and get their input. Um, but that's where we are. We're trying to you know, introduce that, this technology into the market. And so we see a number of areas. There's a stationary product that's gonna to go to healthcare providers. But the cool thing about this, it's non-invasive and it can fit in your pocket. And so this is the future of uh, disease diagnosis as we see it. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Peter. And last but not least, our final finalist is Wingspan, which is an immersive platform that leverages storytelling and AI to build a new and diverse future of work. The principal applicant was Lindsay Kuhn. Thank you. So I'm gonna start with Wibbly Wobbly. That is what Addie McFadden, a video game designer, or how Addie McFadden, video game designer, describes her career on Wingspans. Words like wibbly wobbly and showing that career paths often have twists and turns is why Wingspans is so impactful according to our users. 
My name is Lindsay Kuhn, and I'm the founder of Wingspans, a platform that matches employers to emerging workforce through storytelling and AI. And I'm so thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. The, um, the problem that we're solving, it goes beyond the need to show students the reality of um, nonlinear careers. By 2030, more than 80 million jobs could go unfilled because there aren't enough skilled workers. And at the same time, um, a student can't go into a field they don't even know exists. So Wingspans bridges that gap through story. Our platform, which um, this is our uh, a screenshot of our homepage, has 700 videos and written stories about work which are organized. And the way they're organized is really what makes it special. They're organized by career, major, school, and employer pages. Um, and these are stories that are diverse, authentic, and they feature a lot of very inspiring Rhode Islanders. A typical user experience is students take a story-driven personality assessment. Everything comes back to the story because that's really what makes it so special. Um, they build a portfolio. They make the connection between career and industry through employer pages. Um, and the idea is for them to be energized about their futures. And our goal is to solve the hiring crisis or the talent pipeline crisis starting in Rhode Island with a focus on healthcare, manufacturing, technology, and construction. Our go-to-market strategy is to first partner with two and four-year colleges, and next to partner with enterprises that hire out of these colleges. Our pricing model is that schools, we want it to be a no-brainer for them, and so schools pay $2,500 a year. Um, it includes um, us telling three of their alumni success stories to personalize a platform for them. Um, and they, they partner with us to improve outcomes for their students. And enterprises pay between $2,000 and $8,000 a month, um, depending on the package and the size of the company, to create visibility for the opportunities at those companies. We are really excited. We have had a lot of recent momentum and we're super excited about it. We currently have about 60,000 active users, paid contracts with 25 schools, uh, community colleges and colleges including uh, URI, um, schools in Massachusetts, around the country. Uh, we partnered with the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center um, to create visibility for jobs in nanotech, um, to bring the semiconductor industry, you know, bring those jobs back to the US. We're really excited to be part of that effort. Um, we have four manufacturing partners in Rhode Island, um, and we're just getting those started. And the most exciting news uh, in the past two months is that we were selected, we were one of five finalists selected by the US Department of Education um, for the Future Finder Challenge, which I've been doing this for a long time. And that validation um, has already um, helped us get new partnerships. So that was really exciting. And then last week, um, we were selected as one of 16 finalists um, by DARPA for their AI tools for adult learning opportunity. So the funding that we um, possibly get from this or potentially get from this would help us get to the finish line for these competitions. We're um, really busy this summer um, iterating and reshaping the platform to make it more accessible for adult learners by like changing the literacy levels, uh, making it multi uh, multilingual. Um, and some other exciting features. So we have a great team that's going to get us to the finish line. And I just have to mention them. They're not here right now, but um, couldn't be, you know, this wouldn't happen without them. Alex Chiquana, our CTO, um, Katrina St. Flavin, our curriculum designer, and Marcus Zampieri, he's a professor of AI at George Mason University. So the future generation and our economy depend on us to build these pipelines. If anyone here is interested in getting in touch as an employer, an educator, investor, um, if you're interested in being featured on the platform, um, please reach out. Thank you.
Are we doing good time bet? 6 30. Promise to get everybody out of here. <laughs> no rush. So now uh, we're at the key moment. We heard from the uh, four finalists, and, and now we learn key winners. But before we do that, um, let's talk about what winners and the finalists are going to receive. So the winner will receive approximately $50,000 in cash and in kind services. So we hope will we'll allow them to uh, spring forward and, and get that inertia and I'm super successful. But we also have some amazing finalists who will receive more. So our finalists, we don't pick a second, third, and fourth. Um, each finalist will receive approximately $15,000 in cash and prizes. And I'd like to invite all the finalists to come up so we can do one more round of applause for all of this. All the finalists, please come forward. I invite the whole team up, not just those who attend. Let's do it. One more time for Awana and you should behave last year's winner. Let's give her one more. Thank you. Um, I'd like to recognize a couple of folks who I saw sneak in. So um, the, the important part is just because you may not be in the winner, that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't come back and, and keep trying because you know, to be an entrepreneur, you've got to be resilient, you've got to be passionate, and I'd like to uh, I see Dave and, and Mike back there, and I know they snuck in uh, Bob Contacts, uh, finalist and then winner, correct? I got that. Yeah, you guys were the finalist one year and then winner, so welcome Dave and Mike. It's always great to see some of our alumni. And um, as I stressed, you know, we, we've got four amazing teams tonight, and as always, the quality of the applicants was, was amazing, and it makes the judge's decision uh, much harder. And I can honestly say that any one of these four finalists um, could have merited the top spot, but the uh, rule required the judges to pick one. And so all four of these teams uh, have the resiliency, the passion, the determination, and the coachability that an entrepreneur needs. But at this time, we'd like to recognize uh, this year's winner, UI Custom Control is Jamal. <laughs> I think I first met you 10 years ago and I'm um, glad to see that you are uh, still still at it. Um, I, I'd like to congratulate all four of our teams as well as um, I'd like to invite everyone to our reception out here. I'd like to thank Beth for the amazing job she did. Uh, thank you again to our sponsors, our judges, our champions of entrepreneurship. The 2024 competition kicks off in tomorrow. So, <laughs> thank you, Megan. Um, Peggy is amazing. You're fabulous. Um, so thank you all and have a great evening. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Yeah. 
Hi, how's it going? I, I think we met. I look super familiar. Yeah, Tim, I just can't find you though. Maybe, uh, Nem uh Nemic, yeah, for sure. What are you doing? Okay. So maybe that's maybe cross paths. Yeah, so we went through Nemic salary. I know you didn't come here. Yeah, I've known Eighty, probably thirty years. Now. Okay, so you might help us with uh, whether you have anything time to fall. What's your business? It's an advanced box. It's the rescue box of uh, technology. Yes. Yeah. So, I so think I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So what like the name of the advanced box? Advanced box. Yeah. Yeah. So we're yeah, uh, so nice. nice. so nice. so nice. still trying to find the advanced box. So how's it going? Okay. So we've got three different spills, and then I've poured it around the bottom. Yeah, you had some yeah. I'm sure in there. Yeah, it's kind of so you look at it. So I'm just trying to figure yeah. out what those I know what part it is. So I want to something. Yeah, well, I can become a mental. You know, I'm trying to get all the time. I'm trying to get all the time. I'm trying to get all the time. I'm trying to get the time. I'm Inventing and getting yeah. a medical device or something for him. You yeah. gotta get the A. You want to put something in uh, safety in a car. Yeah. How you got to do it? It's uh, and all this other stuff. It's here. Yeah. 
Secretary of Justice today to discuss the Attorney Roberts, like the three, and the three, and just from that out, it's great to make the public have to live in the first place to get the system in the first place. Because it was so critical that the public didn't have to be able to
Thank you. 